Um, so anyways, what we wanted to do was, uh, we know that you watched the debate cause you were in the comments yes. and stuff and we were, we were talking to you a little bit. Yes. And so what we were hoping to do is go through some of the clips. Let's do it. Here's some of the arguments for yep. continuationism, cessationism. I think we already know. I think the audience mostly knows that you are continuationist yes. with a seatbelt yes. is what you say. Yes. Yeah. Charismatic um, with a seatbelt. Charismatic, charismatic with a seatbelt. Yeah. yeah. Um, I lean cessationist. I don't know what you would say for yourself. I'm searching, man. Um, I'm, I I like arguments on both sides. Oh, okay, so okay. I was I was raised Reformed Baptist. Okay. So really, cessationist by default. Okay. You know, and as I learn my word, mm -hmm. I realize the more you learn, the less you know. Yeah. And I'm humbled by the scripture. Mm -hmm. I obviously still um, am Reformed as far as uh, you know the traditional sure. beliefs. You're Calvinist. But, Yes. Okay. For the, for Young the, Earth creationist. Yeah. We could talk about that off camera. Ah! Um, <laughs> so, so really, really, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to just see how fundamentalist well, what are you, what you guys doing, are. You know, you guys got like corporate jobs. We're different. Yeah, yeah. We're very different from okay. each other. Yeah, yeah. Though. I'm what not. we're doing, what we're doing is searching. I mean, yeah. he he kind of knew where he landed on yeah. a lot of things before okay. I did. Okay. But honestly, I'm fine with saying I'm still reading the word. Respect. I'm listening to arguments. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do kind of lean cessationist okay. only because we were just with Phil Johnson and Mike Riccardi yesterday, and I came in with a whole lot of questions. Mm -hmm. We okay. listened to the entire Remnant Radio thing, mm -hmm. and we were jotting down all of their arguments. Did you guys make a video out of that? Oh, no, no. You, no. you jot, I we jotted like down active, so that we would be prepared sure, sure, to sure. debate both sides. Sure. We would like to debate you. We'd like to debate, debate them. Sure. And they did a really good job they answering did. those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. we. You know? I, I mean, I... I think you did too, but I consumed all of the remnant response videos to the mm -hmm. cessationist movie. Good. And they had great arguments, yeah. bro. And uh, I posed a lot of those great arguments to Phil Johnson, Mike Ricardo yesterday, and they actually had good answers, which I didn't expect because okay. I had no yeah. idea how to answer a lot of those arguments. Okay. So yeah. wow, we should get the, all those guys in a room together. We, so we, bro, we set it up already. We good. did. He, we he did. put them on the spot yesterday. Okay. Because we know that remnants always like inviting people on and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, he was like, would you guys debate Remnant Radio specifically yes. on this topic? And they both said yes. Yep. So hopefully in the I works. Think, so. I think that the, the net positive is from all of this is just debates happening. Mm -hmm. And then you let people come to their own conclusions. Yeah, I totally exactly. Agree. I think, uh, have you guys heard anything about the Michael Brown footage that Brandon has? Like, is that coming out or what's going on with that? Um, so I think you know more about it than I do. But from what I heard... Originally, I heard that Michael Brown didn't want it to come out. Oh, so he Brandon did. from uh, he American offered, Gospel. Yeah, he offered yeah, yeah. to put it out for free. He said put it out for free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because he's yeah, I don't see really that's know. that's not what I heard, and that's not what on what's on social yeah, that, media. I think he wanted one change because they started coming at like a college he taught at or something. And like that. And they did make the changes. They did make and the they change. even offered that they would release the footage with a disclaimer. Yeah. And he, so last I heard from Dr. Michael Brown was that let's put it out. Put it out for free. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be a part of the documentary because he felt like it took a, a sinister twist that he didn't like. Gotcha. So he said, hey, just put it out for free. Okay. I guess there's one part. And then I, from what I heard, and I, I didn't hear it from, I heard it from David, I think. And I, I'm, I reached out to Brandon. We were supposed to hop on a call. Is that Brandon was kind of like, man, I got all this money in this film and I spent all this time mm -hmm. and now this is out. Mm -hmm. And so I think he kind of felt like, I don't want to speak for him, but it sounded like it was like a, this is a lot of work and a lot of footage to just be dropping for free. That's yeah, kind of yeah. what I got. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, I could kind of respect yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's for his sure. livelihood. So I was trying to figure out a way, yeah. like, can, can we fundraise or put some money together to mm. let it drop for free, you know, yeah, and just, guess, like, let, yeah. let, let, let well, people Right here on Bible Thingers, you can definitely count us in. I love Brandon. Yeah. yeah. And okay. we also respect highly Michael Brown. We've had him on the show yeah. several nice. times. He's and actually that, our most frequent guest. We've had him on more than any other theologian. That's awesome. He's been on, yeah. like, Five or six, maybe six times. He hasn't been able to close you guys on continuationists? Not quite. So this, I had is, a this, scheduled, is be a, this is going to be a waste of time. I had a scheduled phone call with him. Okay. I had a scheduled phone call with him, and we were going to do it. He was going to christen you into I straight up charismatic. So. Okay. And, then I, and then it fell through, but okay. it's still pending. I'm okay. going to hit him up and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just to be full transparent, my pastor is a continuationist. Oh, interesting. But with a seatbelt. Okay. As similar to you, Respect. you're charismatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call him charismatic at all, but okay. he's a continuationist with a seatbelt. Okay. Obviously, this is a secondary doctrine. Sure. Mm -hmm. We can break bread together and hang out together. Sure. And that's kind of why we exist. I mean, just to 
just to share my heart. Yeah. I wish I could put this on a t-shirt. In Christianity, we love to talk about each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And very rarely does a page exist mm-hmm. to talk with each yeah, other. That's good. And that's, good. that's why we exist. We want to yeah. talk with you. We yeah. just left Grace Community. Yeah. We uh, spoke to Hugh Ross, probably yeah. the most known old earther out there right now. Okay. And for the most part, we are reformed. We're exhibitors at G3. You know, and did we he, love. Did he, did he close you guys on Old Earth? No, I am. I'm Old Earth. You're yeah, old Earth. I'm. I'm like ninety percent Old Earth. But Respect. we're searching. We love our Reform brothers. We love our Charismatic brothers. Awesome. You know, wherever you stand, we want to talk it. with you. That's how we are. You I know, love it. that's awesome. Yeah, um, I think uh, more conversations. Good, always good for sure. You know, always good. I yeah. mean, even I think it, obviously in Protestant circles, but even across Protestant circles, you know, like I had uh, Jonathan Pejo and saw that, yeah, um, Neil. From uh, Dirt Poor Robbins on, mm-hmm. and I gleaned a lot from them, and I think they get a lot of stuff right. Like I think, I think in terms of practice and continue, uh, not continue, but practice and beauty and goodness and art, mm-hmm. I think they just nailed it. And I yeah. feel like the fundamentalist aspect of some certain Protestant streams just just removes us from any type of practical usefulness. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm and it, you. you guys are in the corporate world, in the marketplace, in the secular side of things, mm-hmm. like your, your yeah. day jobs, right? Um, and, I, and I know, and you guys are in the city, mm-hmm. right? So you're, 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 you're pos- your positioning is just going to be different, where like, as a lot of people are like, city bad, institutions bad, marketplace yeah, bad, yeah. art bad, media bad, all these things bad. And it's like, man, it just, I don't know, it seems like Christians oftentimes can be less effective when you are when you flee the institutions. Yeah, because yeah. they're too busy fighting each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the truth. So, I mean, I'm all culture. for it. So I'm all for it. I'm all for I also think it's important not to not to not to straw man mm-hmm. and not to judge a community by its worst members. Yes, hundred percent agree. You know? Yes, and mm-hmm. and I think in regards to cessationism and continuationism, both sides do oh, that yeah. to each other. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, they don't believe in miracles. Yes, they do. They yeah. just mm-hmm. believe that God is doing them, yeah. and then continuationism. Oh, all they all they do is fake stuff. Yeah. No, not not all of them do. Yeah. Not yeah. some of them do. Yeah. But they often put you guys all in one category. Yeah. And they put us all in one category, yeah. mm-hmm. and it, it seems unfair. And that's what we're trying to get done here: is just a fruitful conversation. Amen. There's no winner, there's no loser. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let's just you know right. share each other's well, heart. You guys want to get into this first clip? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do, do it. it. All right. If I was studying the Bible, reading the Bible, one of these people that that gets the word in another another part of the world, right? And I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm isolated from others in the body. So I'm I'm, de- I'm devouring the scripture. I'm a new believer. Wouldn't it? Okay, I don't want to get, ask a leading question. Do you think that it would be very natural for me reading this to think, oh, this is still for today? Just all I have is the Bible. I don't have anything else outside of it. And I see Paul telling me, okay, walk in love. And Paul telling me, here's how you treat your neighbor. And Paul saying, okay, earnestly desire the gifts, especially prophecy. And then I see, okay, this is for the last days, this outpouring. Do you think that it might be very natural for me to, to think this would still be for today? I think you could possibly read it that way. Yeah. Just as somebody reading through the Old Testament might say, oh, I should be offering animal sacrifices. But then they would have to turn to other passages of scripture to get clarity on what is time and location or even covenant specific instructions. So uh, reading through the New Testament, I would read that. I would probably naturally inclined to read that this was going on in the lives of the apostles. I I, I don't see anybody walking up to people in my church and stand, saying, stand up, get up and walk. I've never seen anybody do that to Justin Peters and, and pull him out of his wheelchair and have him walk. I've never seen anybody make uh, blind eyes see. I've never seen, I've never been standing here and seen anybody raise the dead in my church or in any charismatic church. So I don't see those gifts taking place today. I don't see that the nature of the quote unquote charismatic manifestations today is the same as what was going on in scripture and in the New Testament. Oh boy. How, uh, a man. lot going on there, right? We coming in hot, huh? Yeah, coming in hot. Uh, so there are basically two arguments being presented here. I, and honestly, they could have been two different clips, really. Uh, Michael Brown is saying if you take a black and white uh, interpretation of Scripture, just reading it through, mm-hmm. you're going to inevitably be a continuationist and believe in these miracles. Mm-hmm. And then Jim Osmond is arguing, but I don't see it. It's not happening. Like experientially. Yeah. yeah. So he's arguing from experience, and Michael Brown is arguing from a black and white reading of Scripture, which, yeah. in, in my opinion, 
I'll let you speak, but I think they're both bad arguments. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Jim comparing the, the, the miraculous signs and moves of God to Old Testament sacrifices, mm-hmm. which are then clarified in the Bible, mm-hmm. is wild. Because yeah. the Bible never clarifies that miraculous signs will cease. Mm-hmm. Right? But I, I think Unless that, you're gonna that's think, not why he used that example. He's just okay. saying if you take a black and white reading of Scripture, uh-huh. and we could even give you another example yeah, yeah. here, you'll be a Unitarian because Jesus Christ says, I and the Father are one. So there's a, several. You're you could take 100,000 yeah. examples. He so, just used one. So what I'm saying is, if we, I think it's a bad parallel. Mm-hmm. I think categorically it's a, it's a terrible parallel. Here's mm-hmm. why. If you read the Scriptures cover to cover, you walk away with going, oh yeah, it seems like something shifted, specifically in Acts 15, mm-hmm. where now the Gentile Christians who have been crafted in no longer do animal sacrifices and no longer have to keep what we would call the ceremonial law. Yeah. Anyone who reads Acts 15, fairly straightforward. There's no Acts 15 for, for, for miraculous signs, gifts, tongues, prophecy, seizing. Mm-hmm. There's no chapter clarifying that at all. There's mm-hmm. a verse in 1 Corinthians 13 that some, con- uh, some cessationists, not saying you guys, mm-hmm. think that the Bible is now the fulfillment of the sign when the perfect will come. Mm-hmm. I don't know where you guys fall on that. I think that's insane. That's, that's about Jim's Jesus. Com- that's that's, that's about Jesus coming yeah, back. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Jim's view. Right. The canon closed. So, yes. So the, he has a verse that's a bad verse, and he's going to parallel that to something like ceremonial sacrifice. I think it's a categorical error off the top. The second bad point is that we are now all subjected to his experience. Mm-hmm. I do think that's a bad, awful point, argument. But I don't think it we is, can yeah. brush off. The brush off the bad point of reading the Bible black and white, though. Well, I, I think, think that's a bad argument. I think I think here's here's the thing about the Bible being right. Do we believe Scripture is the final authority? Yes or no? Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So if Scripture is the final authority, do we believe that Scripture can be self-interpreted? What do you mean by that? Elaborate. If you're on a deserted island by yourself and you just have the Bible, no commentaries, you mm-hmm. just have the Bible in a reasonably in a translation you can understand, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not saying KJV. Mm-hmm. Do we believe that someone can read the scriptures and more or less come to a reasonable conclusion of what we would say are the essential theologies and praxologies of the faith? Yeah. So scripture is sufficient. Yeah. So oh, some, yeah. So if For someone primary doctrine, absolutely. Yeah. So if someone has it a plain, clear. a plain reading of the main things, the main things are the plain things. The plain things are the main things. I think it's, it is reasonable, generally speaking that they will come to a conclusion that's closer to continuationism mm-hmm. than they will to cessationism. Cessationism, you have to backdoor in this verse from 1 Corinthians about the Bible being the perfect, which will come. You have to backdoor all kinds of other logical arguments and these three phases that they talk about in the the, the um, uh, with cessationist documentary, which mm-hmm. I think we would agree is sloppy at best in terms of the way they describe these three phases. You, you have to backdoor a bunch of other things mm-hmm. to make that argument. Yeah, Whereas someone is just on a deserted island Give them an NLT study Bible. You guys probably hate the NLT study Bible. Give them an ESV, <laughs> uh, not not study Bible. Give them NLT. Give them an ESV Bible. They read through the whole New Testament. Mm-hmm. That I don't. I don't think if you're carefully reading through the Bible, I don't think you walk away going, "Yeah, you know, we should still offer sacrifices to 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 God." Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, yeah, so tongues. That whole thing that ceased when we got the Bible. I don't think but anyone uh, even, walks away even with that a conclusion. black and white. Just to play devil's advocate mm-hmm. here, even if they took a black and white reading, mm-hmm. I don't think they'll like openly and unquestionably come out with what we see today for tongues. That's that's, that's fair. You know yeah, what I mean? That's fair. I can mm. see that point. Maybe, so maybe so it even won't, if maybe. they say, okay, maybe this tongue thing, sure. maybe it does exist because we don't know what the perfect is, yeah. they still won't know what tongue is. That's that's possible. I, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say that's fair. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it will probably, it, 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 it may not look the way it looks in charismatic churches, which I have an issue with how it looks in a lot of charismatic churches. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that that's a fair point. But I think to say... That uh, to, to, again, categorical error. I don't think Dr. Michael Brown is coming with a uh, quote unquote black and white. I think maybe what you're getting at is like a wooden view of scripture, right? And I don't think he's doing that because if we believe scripture's final authority and we believe scripture could interpret scripture, I think generally speaking, that's what he's advocating for, right? Mm-hmm. As Sola Scriptura guys, well, we all are. We, yeah, we all are. We're but all I'm saying, are. I'm saying if you're an Orthodox guy or if you're a Catholic guy, you're going to say, well, it's scripture and church tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we're saying, no, 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 no. Like, the creeds are important. Church tradition is important. We have our personal creeds, Westminster Confession. I don't know what you guys are into, right? <laughs> but we would we would not say that those things are on the same level as church tradition, Scripture mm-hmm. and church Like, we wouldn't say that. 100%. So we would just say, hey, a plain reading of Scripture is sufficient. And I think, to your point, I would concede that 
a lot of the modern day stuff we see in I call them charismaniac churches mm -hmm. is probably is sauced up is probably not the way we would get if we just had a plain reading of scripture. But I would also say a harder close for me is the cessationist point of view from just a plain reading of scripture. And mm -hmm. I think that's Dr. Michael Brown's point. Yeah, I can see that. Um I'm wondering we were talking I'm I'm glad we were talking about creationism earlier because you actually hear this argument made by young earth creationists. Mm -hmm. All the, that's this is I think basically. Dr. Michael Brown might no, he's I don't I don't think he's a young Earth creationist. Yeah, I don't. I'm know. not yeah. sure to be I honest. Know, with I don't you. know what he is. Um, but this is basically the main argument. If you listen to like a Ken Ham, sure, sure, sure. Bodie Hodge, any of these folks, it's that plain reading. Yeah. You just let the Bible interpret itself. Young Earth creationism. Yeah. What, do you would you agree that, with that? That, that? That's an interesting point. I would say that it, we would then go back into what is the category of book, mm -hmm. and I don't think Genesis is a science book. Mm -hmm. I think First Corinthians is a book to instruction within the church. Yeah. Right. And so I think if we have a book that's categorically written to a church about how to usher in a proper church service, mm -hmm. it's categorically different than someone who's looking at Genesis. And I think they are then making a categorical error. It would be like us reading First Corinthians and saying, oh, this is poetic. Yeah, yeah. I like, guess this isn't poetic. This isn't Psalms. Right. This is, you know, right. this, this, is, this is very literal, written to a church answering questions they're struggling with and they're yeah, dealing yeah. with. So I think the, where are we placing Genesis? How do we categorize Genesis? I would never categorize Genesis as a science textbook. Mm -hmm. I think most reasonable people don't look at Genesis as a science textbook. Right. Right. And I think that's, in, in my opinion, that's why the young earth creationist position is not a appealing one mm -hmm. because I think they're making a categorical error on that. It would be like the same thing with Psalms, the same thing with Job. I, I only think it's not appealing because they use that argument. Because they use what argument? The, you don't take scripture seriously because you don't agree with me. S and say, in a way, say that one more time. You don't take scripture seriously. Someone that's not a young earth because you don't agree with me. Uh -huh. You don't. You're not. You're not. You, they question the uh -huh. the inerrancy of scripture uh -huh. and all this stuff. Sure, sure, sure. People who are older, you don't yeah. believe in the inerrancy of scripture. Uh -huh. You don't believe in the authority of scripture because yes. you're not taking a black and white yes. reading. Yes. And, and someone, you feel like Dr. Michael Brown. Someone Brown's who's right in the middle. That? Honestly, I'm yeah. I'm talking unbiasedly here. Sure, sure, sure. Completely unbiasedly. Sure. I think Michael Brown is kind of saying that. Maybe I, don't, mm -hmm. I, I again I would just say it's a it's a different category of literature, and I think y you don't approach Genesis the same way you approach Psalms. You don't approach Psalms the same way you approach mm -hmm. First Corinthians. Yeah, I think First Corinthians is actually written closer. Like all scriptures written for us, not all scriptures written to us. But I think when we're looking at the epistles, those are books that we can kind of glean more. Yeah, yeah. From right than we're reading. Like if I'm reading First Corinthians and I'm and I'm reading through this church dealing with these things, we could actually draw a lot of parallels to modern day churches in America, right? Mm -hmm. Worldly, carnal. These are the words Paul is using to describe them. You yeah. should be on meat, still having uh, a milk. milk right? yeah. like, it, it, there's a lot of parallels to that. Whereas like, if I'm reading the story of David and Goliath, we would all cringe when the pastor goes up and goes, you're Swing David your and your oh, battles yeah. are Goliath. Yeah, without a doubt. We would all look at that and go, okay, why? Because it's a different approach. approach yeah. and, and, a, and, a, and a healthier view of that is no, no, no. Jesus is the David going in to conquer the Goliaths in our lives mm -hmm. and where the cowards yeah, yeah. afraid to, to do the incapable of doing the bad that right you see what I mean so right. there's different categories that we would put whereas to your point yes if you're taking a very rigid fundamentalist view of scripture then you're interpreting Genesis David Psalm and first Corinthians <coughs> as if it's the saw all the same literary book and it's not yeah not the same category yeah I yeah. can see that point yeah and on the other side of things I don't want people to think I'm attacking Michael Brown yeah. I think Jim Osmond's uh, argument in this section is weak as well yeah okay. you're, you're arguing based on what you've experienced in yes. your life whereas I can 100% relate to his experience yeah. I've mm -hmm. never seen anybody raised from the dead I've never seen anybody yep. be miraculously healed by someone touching them or laying hands on them mm -hmm. I've never seen it mm -hmm. and I've never also seen tongues being done in what we would consider a biblical way with an interpreter. I've never seen that, mm -hmm. but I can't use that sure. as an argument that's, for that's someone true. who's claiming yeah. they've experienced it. And for everyone that, that, again, for everyone that's experienced it, right? Because um, there's a video we reacted to with Ray Rock, who well, was a, a lady getting healed, uh, full on walking out of a wheelchair, mm -hmm. right? And this was a lady that couldn't walk, and now she's running and we're going on walks with her husband. This Ray was there, knew the lady before and after she got healed, mm -hmm. right? So like, We've we've had that on video, verified miracle. I I know people personally that have been healed. Our worship leader uh, Travis Taylor had a very specific kind of leukemia, and um, through prayer, it wasn't one of those you walk up once and they lay him out in the spirit. But through prayer and people laying hands on him, the uh, leukemia mutated to the point where. 
he just had to take a pill for the rest of his life. And then even in taking a pill for the rest of his life, they said that he wasn't going to be able to have kids. And I think he had like two kids after that. That's great. Right? So like yeah. th- these things but happen. But a cessationist would say amen to that. Right. That, that, mm-hmm. And that's where we got to, we then get in the weeds of like. Nobody would say mir- miracles are dead. Cessationists believe in some miracles. Well, some, most cessationists believe in miracles. All right. of them. Yeah. I mean, well, any there's, reasonable there's, ones. No, there's okay. hyper cessationists. Yeah, yeah. Hi- hyper charismatic, yeah. yeah, yeah, hyper cessationist, yeah, 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 yeah. hyper right. Calvinist. We're not talking about right. those. Right. So we're not talking about the folks on the fringes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You guys want to move on to the next clip? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let me do this and then. If you saw, oh, okay, let's talk about Paul for a second. All right. Uh, you would say Paul had Paul as an apostle had the gift of healing, could heal at will, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So why did he leave Trophimus sick in Miletus? Why did he tell Timothy to take wine for his stomach ailments? And if you believe he had an affliction in his own flesh, why couldn't he heal himself? If if you want us to do those things who allegedly have the gift of healing, then why, you know, Paul didn't seem to, to live up to your standards. Well, what you see with the people that he did leave sick, uh, Trophimus and uh, Epaphroditus in Philippians chapter two mm-hmm. and Timothy, those all were taking place even at the, towards the end of the apostolic age. You're talking about late 50s, early 60s. So the cessationist position is that by that time, you do see a dropping off of miraculous events in the New Testament. It's the opposite. So, Acts 28, he heals everyone on the Isle of Malta. Hmm. The very last chapter of the book of Acts, he heals everybody. Yeah, and after the book of Acts, Philippians is written, and First Timothy is written, and Second Timothy is written, and so you're saying that Paul lost. So, what about his thorn in the flesh, I, I, which was earlier? So, you're saying that even, well, regarding well, the thorn in the flesh, Michael, my position is that the thorn in the flesh was the false teachers in the Corinthian church. Okay, I think he I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm good with that. I could have a physical ailment, but I don't. I don't expect the the other thing that, and I, I'm not speaking for every cessationist here regarding miraculous gifts in the New Testament, but it's my observation and my my. Um, belief that what you see happening in the new testament is not only the dropping off of miraculous events you do have you do have paul healing people on the island of malta that's exactly right and that that i think i'm not saying that miraculous gifts ceased before acts 28 i'm saying that miraculous gifts ceased sometime after acts 28 miraculous gifts not not god doing supernatural things but miraculous gifts ceased sometime after acts 28 i think you do see a a dropping off of those events in the new testament record you see an explosion of them in the gospels you see an explosion of them early in the book of Acts. And then as the book of Acts progresses, you see these things happening less and less as the time goes on. So you get to the end of the 60s, right before 70, you know, the, in the, uh, sorry, late 50s, early 60s, when Paul's being executed, I think that there is a dropping off of those miraculous gifts and no expectation that these should continue and that sh- people should start up schools of supernatural ministry to show people how to do miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the petty, the petty, the petty. Oh, was this the? Uh, I'm the sorry, I don't have. Was it the, the Bethel the, yeah, reference? Yeah, yeah, school yeah. of the supernatural. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. that was funny. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so, uh, I, he's saying that there's a, a dropping off of of these supernatural gifts, and Michael Brown goes, "Well, wait about this massive healing that Paul performs at mm-hmm. the island of Malta." Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, I, I think that's a great argument. Mm-hmm. Again, it's. I, I just think you have to read so much into scripture mm-hmm. to say these these healings are fading away, mm-hmm. right? And I also think it's a straw man of assuming what the gift of healing is, or mm-hmm. the gifts of healing, actually. And I think maybe some cessationists are viewing the gifts of healing as the same gift of healing Jesus had, mm-hmm. of like almost this Avenger-like power where you could walk up to anyone at any time and heal them right then and there, mm-hmm. instantaneously. I don't know if that's the, that that's the gifts of healing that they had because as Michael Brown pointed out, there are times where people didn't get healed. Yeah, right. There are times. I mean, even when Jesus goes back to his hometown, he uh-huh. doesn't heal everybody. Uh-huh. Right. So maybe it's the way we're looking at healing, where God's the ultimate healer, right? Working through different people in different ways. However, if you're looking at it like this, Avengers like superpower. Well then, yeah, I don't. But I don't know if that's what we see in scripture. Yeah, right. I mean, we see shadows healing people. You do, which is pretty Avengers like to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know? I think so. I think the next clip is getting into the nature of healing, so mm-hmm. I kind of want to save that. Okay. Um, but uh, as far as the dropping off of the gifts, I, this is probably the most common argument that I heard from like Remnant and Michael Brown and stuff mm-hmm. is that you can't say it's dropping off because the last chapter of Acts twenty eight, the end of Paul's life. 
not only does he heal one guy in Malta, he heals the entire... So that sounds, that sounds like a revving of gifts. Yeah. Right, it does. Mm -hmm. But where I think we've sort of been blessed with the show that we've done, we started an audio podcast. We went book by book through the Bible, teaching the historical context of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of taught us a lot about authorship and dates that books were written and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, and so we were able to study Paul's life pretty in depth. Mm -hmm. Acts 28 is not a, it's not even close to the end of his mm -hmm. life it's it's actually so when he got marooned on on malta he was on his way to rome mm -hmm. and then he was on malta and then he went to rome he got arrested mm. he spent a couple years in house arrest then he got released went back on missionary journeys then he got arrested again and got released again, and then finally got martyred. And in that time, he wrote most of the epistles, actually. Mm -hmm. There's only three epistles that come prior to Acts 28. Mm -hmm. The majority of the writings come after Acts 28. And so I kind of felt like that that argument it comes from a, an assumption that this is the end of his life when it's actually yeah. closer to I don't, the beginning I don't, of I his I didn't ministry. hear Michael Brown making that argument. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't make that argument. Your timeline sounds accurate and reasonable mm -hmm. i think um the, just the, the sheer argument of like these coming to an end during an apostolic age like you, you again you got to go outside of scripture and, and and then create other but not really if you i mean again we're playing devil's advocate here so mm -hmm. which is what we always do we're yeah. not just doing a we're not, continuum. We, we, we pushed cessation as hard yesterday really hard, we want yeah. you to know that yep. so what you're seeing is if you just look at the bible right mm -hmm. just look at it mm -hmm. if you understand when things were written mm -hmm. Paul was writing about this ginormous miracle on the island of Malta, mm -hmm. and then like all that. of these you mean Luke, other Luke, books. Luke, Luke was writing about. Yeah, sorry, Luke, yeah, yeah. My, my mistake. And then all of these uh, miracles are not documented in any uh, in the other books that were written after those miracles. You Why? Mean, you mean the, the epistles? Yeah. So there's why no don't we? There's no historic narratives written after. Again, it's a, we're talking category, right? So you're writing. Letters responding to church's questions, which a lot of the epistles are, versus, hey, this is a narrative written by Luke, who was hired by Theophilus to put together this narrative of, of Jesus' life and then the mm -hmm. early church. So you're yeah. saying there was no need to mention them? I'm saying I think that that aspect of, of the narrative side of what was being compiled back then, mm -hmm. they probably had some of the Gospels at least Luke, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's probably no need to like, hey, we're gonna write what life is like at the Church of Corinth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I think I, that that's how I would look at it. Yeah, you know? I mean, and the only other kind of narrative after that is kind of Revelation, but mm -hmm. that's more like visions and all yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah. spooky stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. No, yeah, I think that's a that's totally a fair point. Um, mm -hmm. Where I think the cessationists would argue is that totally true. This is about you know responding to things in the church. Mm -hmm the large majority of the epistles is telling a church how they should be running mm -hmm. and you after these early epistles he never really talks about what was james written because i feel like is it james is talking about healing i don't know i wouldn't right. be able to if, tell if you that's, yeah, if that's really yeah. the brother of jesus i wouldn't james be able to tell you off the top of my head so yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a um gotta look back I, at I, th show I think notes. i think that's yeah. that's yeah. that's an interesting one yeah you for know? sure yeah. and and that. i want to make clear i'm not i'm not like cemented on this position that you you see I'm cemented that you do see less and less as you go chronologically through the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I wouldn't say that that necessarily means that spiritual gifts have petered out. Mm -hmm. It seems like you could deduce that from reading through the epistles, yep. but I wouldn't say that's a rock solid Yeah, I mean, case. you got the, the pastoral section. Yes. Why is there nothing in there that to instruct someone like me that wants to be a pastor? Uh -huh. There's nothing in there dealing with this. In the first, uh, was it first Timothy and Titus? Yeah, about, first Timothy about and Titus. Yeah, for like an this elder. is your elders. These are your yeah. pastors. This is whatever. This yeah. is, why or is there even nothing? Like, even like situations, like he says to Timothy, if someone's sick in your church, mm -hmm. take them before the elders to pray and mm -hmm. anoint them with oil. But if there was healers in in the churches, mm -hmm. it seems logical that he would just say, have the healer mm -hmm. pray over them and heal them. Pray that he, God would send a healer. Yeah, but we don't see that. We see him going. I, I, to the well, elders. to be fair, I also don't see a healer as a office of ministry, and mm -hmm. I don't see a healer as. I mean, we don't really see a healer ever mentioned, right? That, that, that we see mentions of gifts of healing, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that that there's, yeah, I just I think there's there's that 
aspect of it. I think perhaps people had all sorts of gifts of healing and that that was a different category, mm -hmm. right, of um, ministry versus, that, like, why are administrators not mentioned? <laughs> why are, right? Like, why are all these other things not fair. mentioned yeah, for point. the requirements of an elder uh, in, in First Timothy? I also think, you know, when we talk about a healer, I think it's interesting that we would assume that if there are gifts of healing, that we then would not deal with medicine mm -hmm. or formidable medicine, as if Hey, Timothy has a stomach ache, so like, either Paul's gonna send a handkerchief, or Timothy's <laughs> gonna die, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, he could just drink some wine. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Or he could use the medicinal yeah. aspect. So I think that's also, and that and that's almost more of like a hyper charismaniac position where mm -hmm. folks are like skeptical of doctors and skeptical yeah, yeah, of yeah, modern yeah. medicine. So I, again, that's another thing of like, why would just Paul because not, you're using medicine doesn't mean you're against healing. That, yeah, yeah. You know, so that would yeah. be my, my thought is like, hey, I think there's something to modern medicine. Yeah. Jesus sure. is the ultimate physician, but I'm I don't know what degree of medicine they had back then or what they knew about the human body. Right. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of those developments were discovered within the last couple hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure they had something. And if like healing, making your stomach feel better because of wine was mm -hmm. a medicinal yeah. thing. I don't think God is in opposition to that and only moves yeah, in these yeah. supernatural ways. Yeah. I don't think the medicinal knowledge was great. And in fact, I think a fun fact is I think that that's why they said to anoint, anoint in oil. With oil. Because yeah. I think that they considered that medicine. Medicinal. Then, which is why oh, you see like yeah. um, the Samaritan uh -huh. or the good Samaritan when he sees him all bloody and bruised on the side of the road, he puts oil on him mm. because they, they see that as some sort mm -hmm. of... Yeah, fun medicinal. fact. Yeah. Our church would anoint with oil, okay, probably like 10, 15 years, maybe mm -hmm. even 20 years. Mm -hmm. We used to, you know, let's say you were sick, mm -hmm. you go to the pastor, you keep being sick, you keep being mm -hmm. sick. They would bring you up and anoint your head with oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I would say more than halfway through my pastor's career mm -hmm. at our church, mm -hmm. he decided, no, this, this is contextually wrong. Mm -hmm. We should not be anointing people with oil because it's not what they did back then mm -hmm. just for the heck of it. They mm -hmm. did it because it was the was modern day medicine. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you I know? mean, well, it's obviously not like an issue. We're not like, oh, are you anointing oh, yeah, with yeah, oil? Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Uh, no, no, we're not we calling people the, out. We yeah. think it's the same as like saying, take a little wine for your stomach or whatever. Yeah. It's like having them pray for you and give you a little bit of water. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Because sure, yeah. sure, sure. it's helpful, right? I think that's a good transition into the, the, yeah, for sure. yeah, right. the nature of healing. Where does it say that if God works through someone like that, that they can heal anyone at will? Where does it actually say that? No, I don't think it does, but I think you do see them doing that very thing. Hmm. Walking up and, and Peter and John walking up to the man at the gate and, and healing him. And you see the Apostle Paul doing that with the, the boy fell out of the third story window. You, you don't see the Apostles trying to do this or even just bowing down and praying and praying and fasting and praying really hard for this to happen. They just seem to, what you see in the book of Acts is them walk up and do the very same things of the same kind of nature as what Jesus did in the gospels. And that is simply reaching out their hands or speaking a word and miraculous gifts taking place at their hands. But when it mentions gifts of healing in 1 Corinthians 12, which is for the, for the body as a whole, Right, just like all these other things are for the body as a whole, not related to the apostles. Where does it say that that if God worked through someone in that way, that that individual, not an apostle, could heal anyone at will? Well, if you're if by gifts of healing, you're simply making reference to, or what you mean by that is that God simply grants a healing in response to the prayers of His people. Is that what you mean by that? No, that that this person would see healings more than someone else, not not at will and all the time, but that they would see more healings. Mm. Uh, for example, Randy Clark would be an example of, of someone that sees many healings taking place through his ministry. And, um, and you think he has the gifts, the gifts of healings? I think is a gift of healing about? is regularly manifest through him. Yeah. Just like prophecy is not at our will, it's at, it's at God's will. Healing is not at our will. It's at, if you said that Jesus healed under the Father's sovereign control, right? Not your exact words, but Sometimes he healed one, sometimes he healed all, right? So the same way he works through human beings. We don't have more authority than he had. But I, I do see people that uh, as they minister on a regular basis, you know, most of them names you wouldn't know, uh, colleagues of mine, but they do see healings take place at a much higher level than the rest of us do. And some in specific areas, as I mentioned, one of my colleagues with, with deafness, I was with him. We were in India together. And, he, and when he heard, or heard a woman was deaf, he said, well, let me pray. God really uses me in that way. And she was instantly healed. So 
Um, yeah, I, I do believe that exists. But you, I was just trying to find out exegetically. Is, is, where, is, that, is that the kind of miracles that you think that the apostles did? Do you think that the apostle Peter and Paul just simply said, um, well, you know, maybe we should pray for this person um, because I, God sometimes uses my prayers to heal this person. And so let's just all have a prayer meeting over the man at the beautiful gate. Do you, you, you see that they, that Randy Clark is functioning in the same way that the apostles did, manifesting that gift? Do you think that that's the exact same gift? Well, we're, we're not talking about the apostles. We're talking about your average believer. We're not talking about the 12 apostles. We're talking about your average believer and how God continues to work in the church in an, in an ongoing way. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so um, I think, again, we are, he, he, I'm hearing Jim make a categorical error. So he's again saying, why can't you heal like Jesus? Healing today is like the apostles healing, right? And I think, I don't know of, I mean, again, fringe charismatics may believe that, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, most folks aren't saying, Hey, when we talk about the prophetic words that we get or the the words of knowledge, we're not saying we're Elijah and Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. not what we mean. Mm -hmm. I personally do not use the title prophet because of how confusing it is. Yeah, yeah. Though I believe there are a lot of people that I'm connected to that operate prophetically, mm -hmm. right? Same thing with apostles. I don't use the title apostle because it's too confusing, but I do feel like people have apostolic gifts, not the same as the apostles had. So I'm never going to call my buddy Pagani, an apostle. Mm -hmm. This is too confusing, mm -hmm. right? Same thing with healing. Like we, He's assuming that the gifts of healing are going to be the same gifts mm -hmm. that we see in Acts and that we see exhibited by Jesus. But I don't think that that's how the gifts, even in Acts, it's not always exhibited like a Avengers-style power, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's the that's the tension that we're living in. Is that I think, it's again, it's making a categorical error mm -hmm. of hey, prophets and apostles, and it's like, no, 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 no. When we say prophetic today, we're not saying you're Moses and Elijah speaking, thus says it the Lord, mm -hmm. right? And again, unless you're in some fringe charismatic group, mm -hmm. then and, and most folks within regular charismania probably aren't really checking for those folks, right? Yeah. Um, is, that, is, that, is that helpful? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard those arguments. Um, but I, what I'm wondering is how you can get to the spiritual gift of healing being praying for healing how you can get to yeah the spiritual instead gift of, of just like laying on hands and healing uh -huh. like where, how, how, oh, how, how does that how happen? is that the yeah, gift? how do you make yeah. how do you bridge going from the spiritual gift of healing being what i would say just praying uh -huh. for healing and people instantly and getting people healed. being healed yeah. yeah how does how does that transition happen yeah I mean, it probably happens as the church is developing right and then there's this there's, there's folks that aren't apostles that didn't walk with Jesus yeah. and that their church is still experiencing some degrees of gifts of healing. That, that I would assume that's how it happened. I, I feel like they, and maybe even us up to a certain point, we kind of talk over each other in this category with uh -huh. healing, because I think what Jim is saying uh -huh. is that clearly the apostles had a gift that no one else a will ever have gift, in history. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same and, thing with the prophets. And that was the gift of healing. Yes. The gift of healing was me being able to walk over to you. Sure. Or and that the fact that my shadow could even heal mm -hmm. thousands of mm -hmm. people, right? Mm -hmm. That was the gift of healing. Sure. And Jim is saying, God very much heals today. Mm -hmm. God heals maybe by the millions mm -hmm. every single day, mm -hmm. but it's not a person walking over to you with the gift of healing mm -hmm. that you can just touch, touch their cloak mm -hmm. and miraculously be healed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Jim is making a point is the individual doesn't have the gift, but God very much is active. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so, so again, I think we're looking at two different extremes. We have one extreme, which is saying the gift of healing like the apostles. Mm-hmm. The other extreme is God still heals, but it's more through a collective means of prayer. Which has device. always been the case, right. by the way. Right. Christians are always called to pray. Correct. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, I think in both extremes, that there seems to be this middle ground mm -hmm. where we see it called the gifts of healing, which perhaps is a combination of what Dr. Michael Brown said. There are people that perhaps have some sort of gifts of healing people to have deaf ears mm -hmm. and they just have some sort of grace over their life to, to do that. And then there's a collective element and it's not the same. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, because you're describing sure. two different things. Right. And, and again, I would say in the same way that if someone has a prophetic gift, here's, here's a really practical example of this. I was sit I was sitting down with a fairly renowned Calvinist 
cessationist guy who I adore dearly. And he came from a charismatic circle. I'll tell you guys who he is offline. And I said, man, like, you really don't believe that there's any more, like, words of knowledge and, like, prophetic gifts? And he's like, no, nah, man, I just think it's all kind of like the gift of discernment. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, I think it's the gift of discernment, right? And I'm like, but you know that you you get, God will give you certain downloads. He's like, yeah, but it's just more like a gift of discernment. Instead of God giving me a download about this dude sleeping with his girlfriend in the church, I can look at him and kind of read their body language and it's more in the natural, mm -hmm. right? And so I think, not, not to veer too, of course, but I think what happens is we're then taking real gifts that we think people, I think people can really hear from God. Mm -hmm. And then we're saying, no, that's, that's, we're naturalizing it. That's a gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an error that people have in the cessationist community. Yeah. You're taking something that's a, that, that potentially can be a real gifting, whether it's the prophetic, whether it's words of knowledge, whether it's gifts of healing, that are, are yes, they are unique from the apostles. They are unique from the prophets. They are unique from how they, they operate. They're unique from Jesus. And then we just kind of naturalize it and mm -hmm. go... Ah, that's everything is the gift of discernment. Anything's kind of supernatural, and you you read someone's mail. That's just a gift of discernment. Hmm. And anything that is uh, someone getting healed, well, God's not really using people and really moving through people. God just kind of heals whenever He wants to, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter how much you pray, and it doesn't really matter if you lay hands. It doesn't. And I I just I just don't see that. Like mm -hmm. I don't I don't see that. I don't think that's a reasonable conclusion. I think there are people with prophetic gifts, yeah. words of knowledge, and there are people with some sort of gifts of healing. I don't know how it all works, mm -hmm. and I do believe that ultimately God is the one that's sovereign and provident. And sometimes He heals people, sometimes He doesn't. Yeah. So so according to your perspective, mm -hmm. uh, you're not speaking for all the charismatics no. clearly. Yes. What is the gift of healing? So again, you keep saying gift of healing. I see what in first are gifts of gifts, healing. I think it could be people's unique anointing of some sort of some sort of healing in specific areas, mm -hmm. right? And I think it could be the collective gifts of healing when the saints come together and multiple people come together. I think it could be one of one of those two things, probably a combination of the two things from my from my vantage point. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anyone operating with a gift of healing. I see gifts of healing. According to the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. I think um so I'm I'm really bad at asking questions. I was probably unclear earlier. But what my <laughs> what my what I was trying to ask is how is there a place in Scripture that you would point to to say um, the gifts of healing is defined as praying for healing rather than mm -hmm. what a cessationist would say is that the gift of healing is defined as touching somebody and they're healed? Say that again. You're saying the cessationist would call it as touching somebody and, they and they're healed. healed. Yes. Oh, oh and, and, and I'm then, saying but a continuation is for say, healing. Right. Is there somewhere in the Bible? I, I mean, the only thing say... I would think of is the passage in James. Okay. Right. Which which is about the elders laying hands and praying. Okay. I can't think of another passage right now. If I'm yeah. being honest, I can't think of. You know, and then it kind of comes down to like, well, are all the gifts exhaustively described? Right. What is the gift of administration? Right. <laughs> you know, what is the gift, right? Un like understood. these other gifts aren't necessarily described, yeah, but there seems understood. to be something there. The reality is, though, all of us as Christians are called to pray for the sick sure. and called to pray for one another. Sure. So obviously the gift of the gifts of healing, mm -hmm. I believe, would have to be beyond what all Christians are called to do just well, by being Christian. Yeah, or in us all collectively praying, maybe that is how the gifts of healing are or manifest. Or maybe we all have the gifts yeah. of healing. Maybe, maybe. If God answers our prayers? It, I, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer yeah. to that. But maybe, I, I think it's maybe, a slippery slope. Maybe, maybe the cessationist who pray for healing and then people get healed has the gift have of healing. Gifts have of the gifts of healing. <laughs> it's possible. And they never knew it. It's possible. Or and maybe, by the way, yeah. check this out. I, I'll take it a step <laughs> okay. further. I okay. think cessationists hear from God. Have spiritual gifts like like the miraculous spiritual gifts. Like, pro like prophetic gifts. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my buddy, who's a cessationist, mm -hmm. who's high profile, reformed Calvinist guy, yeah. telling me he can read the mail of, of, of people in his church. Bro, bro, I don't think that's a gift of discernment. Yeah, yeah. I think when you were a charismatic, you didn't call it that. Yeah. And for whatever reason, you, 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 you would put on the reversible jersey and went mm -hmm. the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're like, oh, yeah, it's just a gift of discernment. Like and I'm like, yo, yeah. everything can just be the gift of discernment. Yeah. You know, like, hey, it's gift of discernment, why, gift of discernment, why gift can't of discernment. It be? Why can't it be? Because, because no, I think I, yeah, I, if, I agree with if we yeah, have you can't. a supernatural yeah. God and the spirit of the supernatural God is dwelling in the, the heart of the believer, regardless of what stream of Christianity we're talking about, mm -hmm. that means that something supernatural is it can can transfer from us into the natural. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the, that's the way I would look at yeah, it. Yeah, and I, do, I, I also disagree with... Cessationists also, I think continuationists 
I think on on healing mm -hmm. and actually prophecy a little bit, but we can get into that in yeah. the next clip. And cessationist, I think both are redefining a bit because there's certain definitions that I think fit their view better. Sure, probably. And I think I have I have a couple more points on healing. I know we're we're running short on time here. My my first one is that I don't necessarily think that defining the gift of healings, gifts of healings, as praying for somebody's healing, mm -hmm. I think that the first argument of just reading the Bible, mm -hmm. I don't know if you would necessarily come to that because you read through the book of Acts and mm -hmm. it seems as if the gifts of healings is Peter saying, stand up and walk, mm -hmm. or you know, whoever sure. in the book of Acts, you, you always see them just healing them you really don't see some sort of prayer for them to sure. be healed. So. I think I think the, the, the issue is then we're looking at a we're taking descriptive passages mm -hmm. and then we're making them prescriptive or or um, how something operates as a gifting. Yeah, yeah, right. And I don't I, it, it because we have hey this is how an elder should conduct himself, mm -hmm. right? And so if we go off of like Acts, I mean a lot of times in Acts people get saved and they start speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's what Pentecostals use yeah. to say, hey, if you ain't speaking in tongues, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, right? Yeah. So like I, can't see I think that at all. Yeah. I, I think we gotta be very careful yeah. if we're yeah. using Acts to form how gifts are functioning. Yeah. Because we would not do that for the sake of soteriology. Yeah. We would not do that for all kinds of other means. So I think we gotta be careful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I would say I think I think everybody's doing that. I think everybody's deducing somewhat from the book of Acts. I think that uh, a continuationist would use like Agabus getting the prophecy wrong as how as how I've seen, prophecy I've that, yes. functions and sure. things like that. So I think both sides are kind of deducing. Yeah, I've heard the remnant radio guys do that. I, yeah. I don't I don't remember the, the, the honestly I don't remember the exact prophecy in the passage and if yeah, you yeah, got yeah. it wrong or not. So I'd have to revisit that. It's X twenty one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, the other the only other point I had on this was I watched you and Alan Parr discuss First mm -hmm. Corinthians. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was just chapter thirteen, maybe fourteen. It was about tongues. 14. It was, it was mostly about tongues. Yeah, yeah. chapter fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Alan did awesome most of the time until it got to First Corinthians fourteen. And I think that you had better points in First Corinthians fourteen. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and but prior to that, you guys were talking through Mark sixteen, mm -hmm. which is like the disputed passage, mm -hmm. if it's in the scripture or not. Mm -hmm. And you used Mark sixteen to say, well, even if it's Added later. Added later. Mm -hmm. You can at least see what the early church thought mm -hmm. was the the miraculous gifts. And I would say if you use the same argument for the gifts of healing, mm -hmm. Mark 16, 18 says they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're you're taking it at face value with, with that argument, mm -hmm. it does kind of seem, to me at least, that the early church believed that it was just laying on the hand and, then they, would and they will recover. Do you think that that <clears throat> may be... No, because no, that's fair, because because Mark is talking about all disciples, not just the apostles. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. my brain just goes to where maybe they were just talking about what happened in Acts with the apostles, right. which I would concede that I think that the apostles had a unique gifting, mm -hmm. right? That their gift, that, that their gift across the board, they, mm -hmm. I mean, they wrote scripture for crying out loud, yeah. right? That's different <laughs> than yeah. other, other, again, we would put them in the same category as like a prophet, right? Mm -hmm. So you got Old Testament prophets, you got New Testament apostles. I think they're just, they're unique in that sense. Mm -hmm. But it, but that does sound like it's talking about all disciples in the, yeah. uh, you know, Acts church, I guess, or, yeah. or that, that early church period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a dicey one, man, because you can get is that in scripture? Is it not in scripture? Early I don't think it is. I don't yeah. Think it is. So I think yeah. it's yeah. just it's just a tricky conversation. It right. can very well be used yeah. to say that the early church possibly believed sure. these things. Sure. Mm. But if we use it, we should use it to the end. Yeah. And that's the point he's making. Yeah. If no, we're going to say that, that's you know, a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. You want to watch Next the last one? I know. Yeah. You got. Yeah. Stuff. We we got two more, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I, I don't walk me, up during a Sunday morning service and lay my hands on her belly and say, I command this baby to be whole in Jesus name and then make and then claim that miracle in front of the whole congregation as if I have some supernatural power. If God and moved on you to do it, though, praise God. If, if he moved you to do it, it would happen. It would happen if he moved on you. There can be you in presumption, but if he moved on you to do it, so be it. Wonderful. But, uh, but I, apparently I think, within charismatic circles, God moves on these people to make those kind of claims all the time and it doesn't happen. No, that's I'm that's. I'm saying it never happens. I'm saying that it it doesn't happen. Constantly, you see in in these healing crusades and the things that again you and I agree are egregious abuses of these alleged gifts. 
Um, you see that claim being made all of the time. And so you look at them and say, maybe God told them to, maybe God didn't tell them to. And I look at that and say, you have no authority to say God is telling me right now that this baby is going to be made whole in Jesus name. And then when that healing does not happen, who bears the blame for that? It's never the prophet or the quote unquote healer. It's always somebody else or something else that is to blame. Yeah. So uh, again, I share with you my grief that that can happen and that and that somebody else, you know, leaves a meeting, not just not being healed, but now thinking there's something wrong with them, et cetera, or people think the whole thing is a sham. So, so I mean, we, we don't have to reiterate that. I've no. written, I've written against that probably more than you have, I, right? I've read, I've um, read some of your books on that subject, but right, right, I would but, point out that that type of abuse and harm does not happen in cessationist churches. Right. And I would point out that plenty of people that would have died uh, in cessationist churches have not died in charismatic churches. I, I know many that were healed uh, and that's how they, they, they came into the things of the spirit, etc. So it, it, it goes both that ways. We each have our but I don't know how you can, I don't know how you can make that claim. If they had continued in the cessationist church, they would have died. Bro, I was that I was, was amazing. Shocked. That was amazing. That was like a shocking statement. That was well, that was yeah. like one of the few times where I've seen Dr. Michael Brown get petty because I because I yeah. felt like Jim yeah. was being petty that entire yeah yeah back yeah. And yeah. Forth. I can and that was that. one of the few th times I've seen him. That was a little petty. pity. That I wanted to see. Petty. I wanted to see your take on it. Though, yeah, what's you your take? About it, yeah. Okay, so here, here's what I think. I think where I think Jim is using the most fringe version of charismaniacs mm -hmm. to argue against continuationists. Mm -hmm. I think that's unfair. I think if Dr. Michael Brown was to then use the most fringe version of cessationists that don't believe in any miracles for today and then use that as a broad brush to paint all uh, cessationists, that wouldn't be fair. Yeah. Here's the, the issue. Folks on a cessationist side tend to not have issues with calling out and marking out people they feel like are an error 100 percent. sometimes to a fault mm. and they don't have no issue with being in their little silos and like we're the only ones that really got the truth totally and we agree. have our confession and that's it people on the charismatic side tend to be i don't know a bit more diplomatic a bit softer a bit more relational and i think that's a fault on the charismatic side and and and, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll illustrate this for you i was at a dinner with one of the most predominant biggest merging voices in the charismatic side. And we had this conversation about the cessationist documentary. Mm -hmm. And I said, our issue is we don't call this foolishness out. Mm -hmm. So we don't do a good job of calling this out. So then they call it out. And then we are backpedaling and, and, mm. and oftentimes defending really goofy stuff. Yeah. And so we end up getting to a pretty gnarly argument. I'm going to have them on. I don't want to say who it is. I'm going to have them on soon. We got to a pretty gnarly argument of like, I was like, hey man, like, He's like, well, give me an example. I was like, the Benny Hinn stuff. Like, mm -hmm. the Adukins. Like, it it's just crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah, clearly, right? And then I come to find out he had Benny Hinn at his church. Oh, wow. And he didn't do any, to, to his credit, he didn't do any of the Adukins stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was That's friendly cool. with him, you know? And I was like, man, like, I just don't think some of this stuff's a good look. Like, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think some of this stuff's a good look. I think it makes all of us look crazy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we aren't willing to call it out more then we become guilty by association. Yeah. And I was like, and that's why these documentaries exist and serve a good utility. Mm -hmm. There's a utility to, 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 to pushing away people. I think it's also dangerous, but I think they serve a good utility. And obviously I think it's wrong um, in terms of the theology of it. So I think that if I had to take inventory, I think that's the issue in the charismatic circles. Is yeah. There's a lot of, um, sometimes we're guilty by affiliation and that's a fallacy. Sometimes we're guilty of affiliation because we aren't willing to call out people yeah. and send friendly fire, sometimes necessarily. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's, me and Dr. Michael Brown have had private conversations about certain things I found problematic. Mm -hmm. um, just calling him like, hey man, this guy said this and this and this. And to hear him like, you know, defend some stuff that I was like, oh, all right, well. <laughs> so you know? that, I love Michael Brown. Yeah. So th I'm not gonna bless him. Mm -hmm. But I am curious about your thoughts on this. You said charismatics, where we go wrong, or I say we, mm -hmm. like, you know, where they go wrong is the fact that they don't call out the nonsense. They don't call out, they don't call whereas, it out enough. Whereas on the Calvinist or Reform side, you guys call out everything. Heresy hunting central, right? All the time. But You're right. when given the opportunity, uh -huh. Michael Brown won't name names. He won't name names, but he does call out false practices, which mm -hmm. I think is good. It's but good, but it's not helpful, honestly. I think it's good. I think I've seen him call out specific things around Bethel, books mm -hmm. they've published, right? Practices they have, but in a way where he does not 
call out Bill Johnson mm-hmm. by name. I've called out Bill Johnson by name. Yeah. And this is where I'm in a unique spot. Where well, I'll, even like, I'll like call- Sid Roth. Sid Roth's extreme. Sid Roth. I think we follow each other on Instagram. So be so let me let me tread lightly, but I don't I don't know enough <laughs> yeah, about Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, given the like opportunity that. when Michael Brown gets pressed let me see. and ask, you know, is this wrong? He said, "Well, let's not talk about him. Let's just talk about the argument and scripture." Let me see I, don't, I, I actually you know? no, 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 disagree no, no, with I don't you follow there. Sid Ross. I disagree sorry. with you there because There's another guy. I, I follow quite a few pretty you, pretty You can disagree with me. Guys. I'm I'm fine with that. I do. I think I I totally We had Dr. Brown on one time for a live stream Q&A. And this is back our our audience is diversifying a little bit now, but Back when he did it, like a year or so ago, we were like 99% reformed Reformed, audience. And Dr. Brown came on and he got grilled, bro. Mm -hmm. He got grilled. Every single question was like, why don't you talk about Sid Roth? This is a heresy. That's a heresy. And you're promoting a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just for the record, I don't follow Sid Roth on Instagram. I just, I just have to go. There's, a, there's another guy. Double check? Yeah. There is another guy I follow that's like, oh, whoa. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. you're pretty out there with yeah. some of this stuff. You yeah. know? And there's a couple of folks I've had to unfollow. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're way out there. Yeah. But much respect to Dr. Brown. I think he answered pretty straightforward. Sure, yeah. And he's been back on a couple times after that experience, which I think was probably a horrible experience. So much respect to him. Also, I think the Remnant guys, they're always going back and looking at the prophecies for the past year. So mm-hmm. I don't think it's like all continuationists yeah. are not doing a good job. Yeah. I, think I think the Remnant a- guys are a new... Um, they're a breath of fresh air for those reasons. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because I think within charismatic circles, there is a lot of honor culture, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of relational equity with people that you're kind of it's very true you know and it's and it's just it's just it's just i think it's i don't know if it's cultural i don't mm-hmm. know if it's theological but there is more of that in charismatic circles mm-hmm. whereas in again more calvinist reform circles like they'll 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 throw somebody under the bus if they get out of pocket oh absolutely you know? you're right i, I was but, curious what part didn't you agree with me what on on dr brown not shooting straight i think he shoots straight sometimes I think he'll answer directly. I don't know. Because he did on our own channel, I would say. Okay. But I agree with the... Uh, I think there it, there can be, if we're honest, there can be a hierarchy in charismatic churches based on the amount of spiritual gifts. I'm not... I did not come from a cessationist background. I am I was full-on charismatic, speaking in tongues, thinking I was speaking in tongues, prophesying. I was, I was going on mission trips. People were falling over when I was putting my hand on them. The whole nine, bro. And that was before I was saved. I wasn't even a mm. Christian yet. I was just sort of pretending church this whole time. Right. Mm. And then later on, I got saved and then went to seminary or cemetery, whatever you want to say. And I stopped uh. I stopped doing those things because mm. I started leaning more towards <laughs> cessationism. And I, because of my past experiences where I was like, I was doing that and I wasn't even saved, mm. I swung really hard to the other to side. The extreme, yeah. And I was like, this is all dangerous and demonic mm. and whatever. But since then, I've I've uh, stopped being so cringe and found a. a How happy old were you when when you w- did, did these shifts? Teenage years, late teenage, early twenty. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious if that's a personality type, mm-hmm. right? Like one extreme to another, or if that's an age thing. It could be right because I've um, I have kind of always kept it even kill about mm-hmm. like these sorts of things. When I was at a secret church, when I was at a charismatic church, like I've always kind of kept the. Yeah, I think there's gifts for today, but like I'm not jumping off the chandeliers and mm-hmm. like please don't speak in tongues without a translator. Yeah, yeah. You know, like in public, yeah. like that was kind of always my um my my temperament towards that. But I am curious if there are people who have that like those sorts of personalities that like just go from one extreme to another, or if I it's a youth so, yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I think there's probably both. Because I because because yeah. we see that exhibited and not to diminish what you're describing, but we see that exhibited with um in fitness, mm-hmm. where people go from like hardcore vegan to like hardcore carnivore, carnivore yeah. to like hardcore <laughs> yeah, keto yeah. Yeah, to paleo yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like every week you got a new and then they're doing like the infrared sauna and it's like dude how about you just like follow something yeah, yeah, and yeah, get yeah. some results yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah no I'm with you I'm so with for you. me um, just briefly real quick sure. I was I was uh, you know raised reformed baptist mm-hmm. but then I wound up going to Nyack College for my bachelor's which they don't exist anymore they just closed last August um, but they're a fairly charismatic um Christian college, mm-hmm. uh, you know, university, whatever. Sure. And uh, I remember being in chapel, and this is way before I even knew what a cessationist was. I had no idea what a continuationist was. Mm-hmm. I was just in chapel with a bunch of people around me speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. And I remember, as a person who really didn't know what either side represented, I mm-hmm. would just say, Lord, if this is from you, 
give me a sense of peace where I can worship with these people. Mm -hmm. If it's not from you, you know, bring me out of it. Mm -hmm. I never was confirmed in my spirit. You know, God never gave me clarity in those atmospheres. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I fellowship with them and they're very much a Christian. And when questioned, you know, they, they acknowledged the foundational Christian beliefs Mm -hmm. and they just spoke in tongues all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, and on the reform side, Mm -hmm. I see extremes on the charismatic side, I see extremes. Mm-hmm. It drives me nuts when people dedicate themselves to heresy hunting, mm-hmm. but it also drives me nuts when people dedicate themselves to solely spiritual gifts mm-hmm. and they don't open to exposit the text. That's good. Mm-hmm. And I think the truth is found somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think like, it's yeah, you, you could be cessationist, yeah. Yeah. you could be continuationist, but open up your Bible and get ready to go verse by verse. Yep. I'm in seminary now. I don't call it cem- cemetery because <laughs> the things that I've been exposed to, yep. I would have never been exposed to yeah, if I didn't good. go to school. I mean, if you look at you know Calvary Chapel, like they've they they've known for teaching mm-hmm. verse by verse from yeah. the Bible for yeah. how long? Sixty years? You know they've been around. So yeah, they're solid. Yeah, I have there, a lot there of are churches that, there, that do yeah. that. And I, and and I mean, there's there's there they don't have reformed soteriology. They don't have you know they believe in the gifts. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not gonna walk in and hear anybody's praying praying in tongues in a Sunday Sunday morning service. Mm-hmm. But they're definitely continuationists. So yeah. I, I'm with you, and I think that. There needs to be. Uh, I, th- I think there are, and there needs to be more folks who it's it's and both. Yeah. I think unfortunately, again, our brain goes to the most radical extreme. It's the same way that For non-Christians sure. view Christians. Like yeah. when you're talking to a non-Christian, uh, when you're talking to somebody from an out group, and if, say someone from the LGBTQIA yeah, yeah, WXYZ yeah. community, yeah, yeah. you you start talking about God and Christian, they're thinking Westboro Baptist. Yep. 100%. Right. So like our brains naturally devolve to like what is the most fringe version yes. of said yes. group yeah, that yeah. I feel like I'm on the out group in, and that's how I'm gonna, you know, yeah. represent. And we gotta them. stop doing that. Yeah. 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 For sure. All anyway, right. yeah, let's, let's go. One. Last clip. Not a temporal exhortation, but a command in First Corinthians 14 to earnestly desire the gifts, especially prophecy. And then later in the chapter, Paul's saying, when you come together for your meetings, this is what they should look like. One speaks in a tongue, one interprets, one prophesies, one has a hymn, one has a teaching. So it, it started then, we agree with that. Paul says it's normative and exhorts us to pursue it. So why aren't you pursuing it? Because I don't believe that those gifts have continued in the same function that they did in the New Testament. As I said at the beginning, I would expect as a cessationist that there would be commands given to people in the first century regarding those gifts, which by nature are would be, need to be temporary if they're fulfilling the purpose that I believe scripture says that they fulfill to attest to in signs and wonders, the apostolic ministry and their authority. But you just put that interpretation on prophecy here was not to attest to the apostolic ministry and miracles. The, the it, miracles it was a revelatory through, through. gift. Yeah, it was a revelatory gift. But, but okay, it was a revelatory gift that continues. Do I, need, do I need revelation today or do I have an all-sufficient word? Of course you need revelation today. You have the Bible, but of course you need revelation. Just like I need something uh, outside uh, of Scripture? Of course. When you're seeking the will of God, when you're asking him for wisdom on a situation, when, when you don't know you're, you're, you're ministering in a critical life and death situation and you ask God, give me wisdom, show me what's going on in this person's life, help me to get to the heart and root of this. Lord, I've got a major decision. Are we to sell our possessions and go on the mission field? Or are we to work with the poor in this city? What are you saying? That kind of revelation, of, of course, just like in Acts, the 16th chapter, they're going to go one place. The spirit of Jesus says, no, they're going to go another place. No. Then Paul gets a dream that has, that's not adding or taking away from scripture. But, but again, the, the point is we agree that it started at Pentecost. We agree that Paul's, tells me I'm a believer. I'm reading the Bible today. And he says, earnestly desire the gifts, especially prophecy. So, so I'm, I'm going to do that. Are you telling me I shouldn't do what Paul wrote? I'm saying that that command, I think that to earnestly desire that gift, which is operating in the first century was time specific. Yes. Now, if, if we're talking about by prophecy, if, if, if you want to say that by prophecy, what we mean is <clears throat> the proclamation of what has already been revealed, in scripture, then I think we should pursue that. We should desire that. Um, I don't think that I should be desiring or pursuing a revelatory gift. I don't believe that the revelation is going on today, that I don't believe that people are speaking authoritatively, inerrant and infallibly. I, as I said at the beginning, I do believe that the spirit of God gives us wisdom, gives us insights, open our eyes, encourages us, 
helps us to see things that are going on, inclines our hearts all kinds of different ways. I don't call that revelation. Yeah, I mean, we're, this is now we're into semantics, right? This is like he described all the things that sound revelatory to mm-hmm. me, <laughs> and it's like, but that's not revelatory. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, I don't know what you, I don't know what you do with that. Like, so what do you mean? So, what, so he talked about wisdom, insight, right? What, what were the last couple of things he said, right? Okay. And then, and Michael Brown is saying, yeah, that's a revelatory gift. That's that's. It, we have the scripture, and the scripture is sufficient, but the scripture isn't sufficient on if you should move to California or not. Mm-hmm. You need a revelatory insight from that. Well, you want right? me to move to California? I mean, no, yeah, I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> you know? I don't need to pray, bro. Just say the word. Right. No, <laughs> but, but, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. like if 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 you're like, man, I feel like God is unctioning me away yeah. from but that's working not, on my corporate job. My issue job. for here is that that's not prophecy. I, he got so, so, so now we're 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 into semantics, right? Mm. To me, prophecy isn't just "thus says it the Lord." Mm-hmm. To me, prophecy is seeking the Spirit of God to get insight and to get a word of knowledge to get some sort of guidance for where one is headed or for the benefit of somebody else. Mm-hmm. I don't it, it think seems it's like just you guys thus did says the, the Lord. same thing with healing, though. Okay, that the gifts of healing or the gifts of gift of yeah. prophecy yes. becomes just simply praying. N- no. Because we said earlier, from the very beginning, we said that the gifts of healing and the gifts of prophecy and all, all of the, the, the gifts of apostolic are, are unique from the apostles who wrote Scripture and, he, and perhaps healed differently than we did today, right? So this has been a, like, we've had this consistent tapestry throughout this whole conversation. There is a distinguishment between a, quote, unquote, prophecy today versus a prophecy in the Old Testament, Hmm. Right, hmm. we th- th- this is most charismatic's position is again, unless you're looking at the fringe, we're not saying if someone has a prophetic gift that they're Elijah or they're Moses. Mm-hmm. They're not on some thus says of the Lord, right? And so, yeah, I think I think it's different. So I think we would all agree that if you're praying for wisdom and discernment about if you should leave your job, when you should leave your job, that you're hearing from God, you're hearing from the Spirit of God, mm-hmm. right? We would say that's prophetic. So if the Old Testament defined prophecy mm-hmm. a certain way. Mm-hmm. You're saying the New Testament redefines I th- prophecy. I think there's an evolution that happens. I'm not saying there's a there's a point where you could say this changed to this, but I'm saying that, that there's some sort of seemingly there's some sort of evolution that happens in terms of what is prophetic in the New Testament and what is prophetic. And, but I would say there's even I, I can't think of any examples. Maybe maybe Jonah that there's there's oft, there's often conditional prophecies in the Old Testament as well where they're mm-hmm. not this is going to happen. Right? Jonah goes, tells Nineveh to repent, and then they like they repent. Right, mm-hmm. so there are conditional prophecies as well, but I, I I would say that Dr. Michael Brown saying we need a new revelation, aren't we then just arguing over semantics? Is this prophecy? Is this not prophecy? Is this revelation? Is it wisdom? Is mm-hmm. it right? But we're all agreeing that as you guys are praying to transition from your corporate jobs at some point to do this full time, you guys are going to need something beyond just the Bible mm-hmm. <laughs> to know how, when. And 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 what's the best way to make that transition? Yeah, mm. I need discernment. I'm you need discernment. Yeah, see, <laughs> see, see, and then we would go back to everything is discernment. I'm only kidding. I'm right, only kidding. everything is discernment. It's discernment. It's I, discernment. I think honestly, that is kind of what the conversation has come down to at this point. I Semantics. think it's the, I think it's the defining of what the gifts are. Uh-huh. To me, that's that's where the difference is between okay. cessationists and continuationists. And I think that a continuationist would say that prophecy, like you said, is different from the Old Testament, whereas a cessationist would say, I don't I don't see that there's a difference, or that we can yeah. um, believe that there is a difference between the Old and New Testament. Sure, sure. And I have a question for you guys. Why do you think that there seems... Why do you think that cessationist communities seem to be selected with which gifts are for today and which gifts are not for today? I think that's where they get into the cluster argument, yeah. and where they'll talk about how God used specific people for a specific reason. Uh-huh. Moses and Joshua sure. to authenticate their message. Elijah and Elisha to authenticate theirs, and then Jesus and the apostles to to authenticate theirs. Uh-huh. And you really don't see these miracle workers throughout the rest of the Bible. And uh, so, so I think that's technically where, what they would fall back. And they on. Not, they're not saying that miracles didn't happen between those times. Mm-hmm. But what they're saying is the individual who had the authority to walk over to you and lay hands and heal you on the spot. 
that they were active within those time periods. Yeah. Which, yeah. in all honesty, like I said, I'm searching, but I think that's a pretty fair argument. Have you guys seen the Remnant Radio thing against their cluster argument? There's been yeah. quite a few things done I to have. kind of debunk I, that I, cluster yeah, and it's, argument. It's kind yeah. of it's yeah. a little. And I even, I even reached out to uh, the, the director of that about the cluster argument, how confusing it was. Mm-hmm. That there's like these three moves, and and he conceded yeah. that that wasn't very clear because even in the way they described it, they were going back and forth between signs and miracles and like God speaking. You know, yeah. so then it's like. Okay, is it signs of miracles or is it God speaking? Because if it's signs of well, what about what do we do with David? Yeah. I mean, the Psalms is so would God speak differently to David, or would we categorize that as a different type of literature? And yet God is still speaking in, to David. So I think what the cluster argument is saying is not that there wasn't prophecy, uh-huh. not that there wasn't miracles, but individuals with these seemingly Avengers type of power uh-huh. to do these miraculous works. Like on command. Got you. Okay. And that wasn't that actually wasn't my question, but that's that's interesting. You went there. I was just simply talking about why, in certain circles, when we look at the gifts laid out in First Corinthians, they go, ah, "We like the, the teaching, preaching one, mm-hmm. and we like the um, the discernment one. Yeah, we like that one. Yeah, and the administration one is cool. Yeah, yeah. And then like." But all the other ones is like no yeah. no gifts of no no gifts of uh, healing no tongues no uh, uh, apostles right like what 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 is that like and 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 then and why did the gift of preaching why is that okay and right. you know like I I I don't understand that what I was trying to get at is they use the cluster argument to say that the gift of tongues the gift of prophecy and uh-huh. healing was unique similar to the gifts of these certain individuals in the Old Testament uh-huh. and so inherently you only see them in the early church. Yeah, so mm-hmm. if you if you hold to the cluster argument, mm-hmm. then that would, by default, by the time you get to these New Testament books, that would eliminate those gifts by default because they're personal gifts. Mm-hmm. They're a person-empowered, Avengers-type power mm-hmm. that were able to come to you and heal you on demand mm-hmm. or any of those things. Mm-hmm. To authenticate so, this to message. To authenticate yeah. the message of the gospel. Sure. I'm not advocating for that argument. I'm just saying this that's, is the that's answer. The okay. This is the answer. So by default, by the time you get to the New Testament, yeah. these time periods are over, which would eliminate those yeah. specific yeah. spiritual gifts from the list. Do you think that there's a context where maybe the gospel may still need to be authenticated for some yes. people today? Yes, and that's where I disagree with, I would say, the mainstream cessationist group. Uh-huh. I would say that you go to a indigenous tribe, no Bible in their language, yeah. no nothing— I think God could totally use the gift of tongues yeah. there. Yeah, totally. I yeah. think some hard because it seems like there was... seems to be more miracles that that I'm hearing about outside of the West I in agree. terms of whether that's full on healing 100%. or whether that's prophecies or dreams and visions. Yeah. than there are here. And in fact, I would almost say that that could be used as an argument for cessationism because we have the authenticated uh-huh. scriptures ourselves, so we have no need for these miraculous authentications. Interesting. I, w- I was seeing yeah. that as an argument for continuation. Yeah. <laughs> this, this <laughs> is part of the world, like yeah. where you were, like the gospel needs to be authenticated. Yeah. God still is is more likely and moving, seemingly yeah. moving more miraculous in other. And I think even when the, the, there's a documentation of miracles and all these different things, yeah. It seems like these yeah. things are happening outside of America, healings, that yeah. sort of thing. I would qualify that and say I'm probably the minority uh-huh. when it when it comes to that question. Okay. Yeah, me too. If, and and my with my brothers Justin Peters and and Jim Osmond, mm-hmm. this is where we disagree. Mm-hmm. They would say that God no longer speaks in dreams and visions. Mm-hmm. Whoa, they I, believe that? Yeah. Oof. I, I, that's that's too far. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I would say, I would far, say yeah. that that is too extreme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact. Some could argue that the gift of prophecy in and of itself is hearing from God Uh through his word, through dreams, through visions, to come to what? The gospel that's authenticated. So if God is using those gifts to present those tribes or those people with the gospel, how can we say that's not true when there's a gazillion Muslims being converted left and right Right. with dreams? Right, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Or or I just think if we're going to go back to the book of Acts, which is like descriptive, prescriptive, like I think a fairly clear passage was, was was it Acts... Two seventeen, in the last days, your oh, when he's comparing to Joel, yeah, and your yeah, yeah, um, yeah he's quoting Joel, but he's saying this is going to happen in the last mm-hmm. days, and I guess you then kind of have to redefine what the last days are. The last days are only in this apostolic phase, but mm-hmm. not in the mm-hmm. real last days, where I think most of us would look at it and say we've been in the last days, yeah, right, and therefore there's these daughters prophesying and men having visions. Yeah, I think that could get super deep into eschatology, actually. Sure. 
Um, so that would be a, an entire rabbit hole. Yeah. But if you don't mind, I know we're, we're coming to a close here. I kind of wanted to ask you one thing about, uh, we mentioned the difference between Old Testament and New Testament yeah. prophecy. I heard this argument a lot when I was digesting these arguments from uh, all these continuationists. Mm -hmm. um, and the argument seems to go that a prophet will hear from God, and then it is up to them to interpret, and sometimes a prophet can get it wrong because their interpretation is wrong when they speak it to the congregation or whoever. Is I've it, never quite heard it worded that way. And they'll use Agabus, they'll use Acts 21, which you mentioned earlier, sure. to say that they were given a prophecy, and then when they spoke it, it was more so that they miscommunicated what mm -hmm. God had said. Interesting, yeah. So I don't have a question anymore because I thought you were going to hold to that. Yeah, I thought you held to that too. <laughs> I was going to press yeah, you on I, that. I, I've never heard so it. God can God can speak to you through prophecy, right? Yeah. And that's why some of these people have false prophecies. It's not because God's word was wrong. Yeah. It's because they interpreted it wrong. And if you look deep enough, mm -hmm. you'll find the true prophecy that they were supposed to say, but they said yeah. it wrong. Yeah, yeah, and it's sort of equated to this difference between Old Testament and New Testament prophecy, mm -hmm. that somehow the New Testament prophecy is lesser than the Old mm -hmm. Testament prophecy. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't call it lesser. I think, um, I think if I'm thinking of prophecy, I don't know if it's always like God told me. Mm -hmm. I don't use that phrasing at all. Yeah. God told me, God said, I don't think that says the Lord. I don't think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. And I and I I think I think even if when I'm in context where someone is prophesying on a Sunday morning context, mm -hmm. I in my circles, I don't hear those types of words. Mm -hmm. God says, the Lord told me. It's more so like I'm I'm getting this sense that someone here is dealing with this. Yeah. You know, and then I'm getting this sense that you had this situation happen in X, Y, Z, and da da da. And then those, so there might those, be those statements can be very generic, though. Sometimes right? they are, but sometimes they're very specific. Like if I'm if I'm in this room and I'm like, oh, I'm 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 you know, I have a general sense that yeah. someone's hungry. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's they, like they, they, obviously for, there's someone enough. hungry. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, love to enough. hear somebody prophesy. Or that. like yeah. or like yeah. someone is struggling with sure. you know. Premarital sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I Like, get clearly, it. there's going to be like 30 people in that room that are struggling with it, or yeah. alcoholics, I'm, I'm, or whatever. I'm saying you know? when if it's when if it's when it's specific of like, hey, I'm getting that someone has pain in the right elbow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And someone's like, I have pain in the right elbow. They come forward, and all of a sudden, the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like stuff like so that. So you've seen that. I've seen that kind of stuff. Okay. Like very specific. Um, you have this sort of pain. The diagnosis is bad. And then the person gets up and they get prayed and then they get healing. And yeah. then doctors don't have an explanation for that. Okay. Yeah. You know? So I've seen that sort of stuff. And so I think that's a that's more of a sensing and less of like a thus says it the Lord, you will, right? And mm -hmm. I and I just don't think I, that's to me, I I'm uncomfortable with God told me in general. Cause I think mm -hmm. that gets manipulated all the time. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, probably most often with dudes and chicks, right? Like dudes and girls. Yeah. God told me you're my wife. Like, ugh. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, but I you. will say, I will say that the handful of times in my life that have been very, I won't say audible, but internal. And one of the times for me was when I sat down, I had a first conversation with my wife. The moment I sat down, I wasn't really even romantically interested in her. Mm -hmm. I got this function that like, this is your wife. Like mm. I heard that in my head. This is your wife. I did not tell her that. Yeah, guys, don't don't do that. Right? <laughs> did not tell her that. And you fast forward twenty years later, mm -hmm. married for sixteen years. She's your wife. She's my wife. Right? So was would you that, say that's would, prophecy? I would say that's a prophecy. Okay. Right? And and to be fair, there's also things that I believe that I've gotten like that mm -hmm. that are um, oh gosh, how do I say this? That are hey, don't worry about this. This is how this is going to play out. And this is, and I just don't say anything. And it's like, yeah. that's not on me to say. So, you know, I mean, to kind of agree with you here, that's technically thus saith the Lord. Because if he, if he, if you prophesied in your mind mm -hmm. that it was going to be your wife mm -hmm. and she actually became your wife, mm -hmm. or I just got the Riz. <laughs> You know, and it was just me. That's a given. That's bro. it. That's a given. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just the real. You know, or yeah, he said, given, you know, yeah. I'm not, don't worry about that circumstance. I'll yeah. figure it out. And yeah. then God figures it out. Yeah. That that aligns itself with Old Testament prophecy sure. because sure. it happened. Because it happened. Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't happen, that's what we have an issue. But but you see how I'm saying that there's a that that, that the way that is being received is not in the sense of 
I it's it's more of like a humbling and a trembling that like I I think this is God, but mm-hmm. I'm even weary of saying things like God told me. And you me could this misinterpret it. I could have. I guess yeah. I could have with my wife. I don't think so. Could have married yeah. somebody else. You know. I, I guess I could. I guess I, I guess I. <laughs> well, then we get into the whole how much providence yeah. does God control, yeah, 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 which yeah, then yeah. like you know. Before you have kids, and then after you have kids, and you're like, wait a minute, like God used me to usher in humans, and yeah, yeah, you know, you, we can go down that rabbit hole. But yeah, yeah. so I, th- I, th- I think so. But is it thus? Does it the Lord? Is it more of a, a sensing, a feeling, and you have to kind of work through it and see if it's if it's accurate? Yeah, I think these are good questions. And again, I am not speaking on behalf of all yeah. charismatics, and there's people that are way smarter that can articulate this better than I can. But yeah. I'm I'm just externally processing with you guys these things. If I could, this is this is this will be my last pushback. Sure. And I know you didn't make the argument, so I'm not necessarily trying to convince you, but yeah. perhaps for the viewer, I would think that my my issue with saying that prophecy in the New Testament is different and can be possibly mistaken mm-hmm. by the prophet and uh I, I find an issue with that, and I feel like that's sort of a redefinition of prophecy. I think the go-to for cessationism is they'll go back to Deuteronomy and say that if a prophet is in stone error, him. stone yeah. him. Right, yeah. that's that's the go-to for the cessationist. But I think a better verse, in my opinion, is Second Peter 1, verses 20 and 21. Okay. It says, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation for... And then it expands on that. It says, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And so I, in my opinion, I feel like if you're making the point that men can get it wrong, I feel like this is in direct contradiction in terms to of, that. Read that last part of the verse again for me. For, for men speak on... Men that, spoke from God mm-hmm. as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good verse. Yeah. That's a good verse. So and even even a New Testament definition, though, it seems, yeah. it seems that it seems prophecy same, yeah. is thus saith the Lord. So, so yeah. perhaps, perhaps prophecy is the same, but the people hearing from God aren't apostles, capital A apostles, capital P It's prophets. It's possible, but I you know? think... I like think, maybe our, our proximity... Is different, and so yeah, we're not we're not getting different. bit of a stretch. I get you. Maybe, I'm, I I'm get just, you. Yeah. I, again, I'm just I'm giving I'm I'm just shooting from the hip here. What I, I yeah, hear yeah, you, and yeah, we're we're surprising yeah. you with the verse. So, you know, we didn't sure we didn't prep yeah, you yeah. for this. Or and again, I'm not trying to stump anybody. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I and I definitely I love your view. Um, I I'm I'm studying myself. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get answers for myself. Mm-hmm. So this verse. I'm trying to get answers for it. I'm going to go back home, open my commentaries up, mm-hmm. ask my pastor, get your ask some cessationists, yeah. right. get my logos yeah. going 10% on. 10% off by you know what I mean? <laughs> And I'm going to try to figure it out. Yeah. But at, I don't like taking anything at sure. face value. Sure. Reading black and white is not the answer for me. Sure. But at face value, yeah. it does seem that it says that prophecy is thus saith the it Lord. It says no prophecy I could be was wrong. ever produced. Yeah. I could very, be, yeah. very well be yeah. wrong, but yeah. it yeah. seems like that. Yeah. 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 yeah again, I, I feel like when I had the remnant guys on, we just dis- we discussed this mm-hmm. difference Old Testament New Testament prophecy. Yeah, and I think they're going to be a much better source on, yeah. on this this specific question. Mm-hmm. Um, from my vantage point, whether it's proximity, whether it's the the gift evolving, there seems to be something different between an Old Testament capital P prophet, yeah, New Testament prophetic gift, a capital A apostle, an ap- yeah. apostolic. I gift. totally. I think these these scriptures in Acts and First Corinthians for either side mm-hmm. are very difficult. There's some. That a cessationist can present and say, "What do you do with that?" Mm-hmm. And I think at the same time, like with when the perfect comes, like you did earlier, a continuationist can say, "What do you do with that?" Yeah, and yeah. I think both sides yeah. make make sure. Good That's why for me, I'm undecided. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it I does think see that, valuable arguments on both sides. Yeah, I think I, th- I agree. I think the tough part is sometimes the cessationist. You guys ever heard Neil deGrasse Tyson explain why he's not an atheist? Why he is an atheist? Why he is not an atheist? Oh, oh, no. I, he's an agnostic. Is that what you're he saying? He goes. If I'm if I don't believe in something, I don't then go have anti-belief conventions about it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Right? He's like, if I I don't play golf, we don't gather around and have anti-golf conventions and talk about how stupid golfers are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think when I hear the cessationist camp and the way they talk and the way they navigate, the way they have these conversations, is it reminds me of Neil deGrasse Tyson's point of atheists, like. Atheists have their own conventions and their own, and it's like if you don't believe in something, why are you spending so much time talking about how you don't believe in something? I can see and, that, and, and I see that from cessationists. I yeah. see like, okay, cool, man, like, fine, you guys don't believe in the gifts of spirit. Mm-hmm. Why so much vitriol yeah. to generalize 
A whole, I mean, a be, whole community of people by advocate, the, the most fringe activist in, in, in the... I think that's wrong. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think we can but all But to be honest, wrong, yeah. the Charismatic has done it too. They made two movies. What was the most? Um, the, 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 the Demon Slayers made two movies in almost direct response to the American Gospel films. Those... Well, okay. To be fair... I haven't seen any of the movies. Okay. I haven't, I okay. haven't seen any of the movies. We can cut this part if you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen Cessationist. I've okay. seen I've seen I ended up watching the yeah. full movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh and so I I don't I, I don't know what's in those movies. Yeah, okay. I don't know if they're responding to But it was to come out in Jesus' name. So I mean, yes. Come out in Jesus' name. And then the domino effect, the domino if effect. I'm not yeah. mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right? I started and watching the domino effect. I apparently, did start watching I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm not the source on this. Okay, so you guys haven't but, seen them either. No. No. Okay, fair no. enough. But, but I believe those movies were in direct response to the American Gospel films. I know Mike very well, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's going to be that petty. And I don't think the timelines line up. Meaning that I think when the American Domino was getting made, it was around the same time Cessation was getting made, and I don't think he was thinking about the Cessation as documentary. Yeah, I don't, I don't Perhaps know. there were yeah. some responses, cool. some arguments. If I'm wrong, that, I'll stand corrected. And the, happily. The, the fascinating thing about Mike, specifically Mike, I'm speaking on, on my relationship with Mike, is Mike comes from an Acts 29 reform background. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is I would love to sit down with him. Yeah. By the way, I would love one of our dreams to sit down with with him and Isaiah Saldivar. Um, we would love to talk with them and get the Remnant guys on too. And we did get the uh, the Grace Community guys to say that they would have that nice. conversation on that'd us. That'd be great. So if you can connect us, that'd be yeah. great, but mm -hmm. no pressure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this conversation was great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed thanks, your insights. Guys. This was fun. This studio is amazing. Well, thank you guys for having uh, me, bro. You know. And we got all the tech stuff sorted out and it worked. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're like a tech genius, bro. I don't know I, about that. You were doing stuff and you were like, you were asking me, you were like, you think that would work? Totally, yeah, bro. yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, whatever you it's say, not, bro. It's, yeah. it, it's not a spiritual gift. I think you discerned what to do oh, up on the go, screen, bro. <laughs> Word, man. <laughs> but next time I come here, God willing, there will be a next time. Yeah. yeah. I hope John MacArthur's picture's right next to that Jesus. That's right, right. It might be, bro. <laughs> it might be. I like that picture. That was fun. That was fun. We yeah. were, bro, to be trans fully transparent with yeah. you, I was, I was kind of shaking at my core to think of how you would react because this is oh, the first time we're meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no <laughs> idea if you were going to like get offended or not. Yeah. I, you know? I wish it would have been a modern picture of him. Because no, that but I thought the we older purposely one... went with the old one. Yeah, yeah. because when you go to Grace Community, uh -huh. the old pictures are everywhere. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we got to slap a really bad Photoshop of him wearing That's a amazing. blessed God hoodie. <laughs> That's amazing. Because yeah. we that woke up, up there. Yeah, <laughs> we woke up and realized that we both have black hoodies, black hoodies on. Yeah, bro, look at this. And I'm like... We got to put a hoodie on John MacArthur. Yeah. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you too, Thank man. Thank you for having us here. Yeah, man. Thank yeah, you, bro. I for sure. Appreciate it.